Hello and welcome to week six of Friday Football Fever. I'm Jeff Jones and our marquee matchup on this week's schedule feature two teams that actually share a bunch of similarities. Marble Falls and Liberty Hill kind of look like mirror images of each other. Both of them run that old school slot T offense. They both have um, enter the game undefeated and believe it or not they have guys on both sidelines who really know each other and go way back several members of the marble falls coaching staff actually started their careers and used to coach at liberty hill you know there's nothing better than a little friendly competition and of course it's enhanced with some trash talk i think we have bigger and stronger guys we work a lot harder than Marble Falls does. I think we are probably more prepared than any team that's ever faced them. They've been off for three weeks. They've been preparing us for three weeks. We get them for three cold, rainy days, you know, to prepare for them. We're kind of the underdog. I mean, this is our first time. We're really desperate for a win. We don't want to go for just a win. We're trying to absolutely embarrass the other team. That is our goal, time in, time out. Time in and time out, that is their goal. Let's get things moving with our QC Kinetics Game of the Week. And guys, I want you to take a look at this moon that we have right now. The moonshot up here is incredible. And what do I see in there? Friday football fever written on the moon. Guys, we have gone intergalactic on this one. And I think our new extraterrestrial fans will really love the out of the world play that we saw early on in this one. Check out the uh, guy of the day was Blake Simpson. Liberty Hill running back was just getting started with his very first touchdown. His second one was the first play of the next drive. He sprinted down the right sideline right after they sprinted to the line of scrimmage to get things ready. A third Simpson touchdown will give Liberty Hill a 21 to nothing lead at the break. They went ahead and won this game 40-40. To seven guys this one was amazing it was fantastic Liberty Hill stays perfect on the season Marble Falls picks up their first loss of the season meaning that they fall now to three and one my good friend Emily John Greco was on the sideline she got to see all this action and Emily uh, Blake Simpson seemed to just steal the show he had three touchdowns in the first half five touchdowns before the end of the third quarter tell me he is who you talked to head coach Jeff Walker about Of course, Jeff, that is who I talked about. You know, this team remains undefeated and it's blowout after blowout. And tonight it's because of Blake Simpson. Every touchdown in tonight's game was by him. He's a senior leader on this team and he barreled through every Mustang that got in his way. I talked with head coach Jeff Walker about the running back. And while I was talking to coach, one of the most interesting things he said to me was that this was too close of a game, too close of a game. Let me remind you, the final score was 40 to seven. Ah, well, you know, we're, we're, we're just better. You know, we, we watch ourselves on the, from the sidelines and, and we have a better team than what we showed on the scoreboard. But uh, like I said, being six and oh, I'm happy for the kids. And uh, we have two bye weeks to get better. Talking about the kids, I want to specifically ask you about Blake Simpson. That guy seems to always find his way into the end zone. What has he done for your team this year? Yeah, tonight was his best night. He hadn't been running. I challenged him a little bit because uh, he is a great football player. And uh, we just need to build on that. But now all, all three of my backs are pretty good. Uh, or say four. My, my quarterback can do a lot of things too. Uh, you know, we just we got to ride those guys. And uh, they know they can do better too. Uh, Blake's been playing since he's a sophomore. You know, in his senior year, uh, I think he's a little more motivated now moving forward. I do want to ask you, you keep saying get better, get better. You've had <laughs> blowout weeks yeah. every single week. You're 6-0. Yeah. What can you do to get better? What do you need to improve? And we can do a lot. Now, our defense has been playing lights out, and we got to continue to do that. We've This is our fourth shutout in a row. I know it didn't show it on the scoreboard, but offense gave them their touchdown on. Uh, their defense scored, so our, our defense has shut out the last four opponents. But... Uh, we, we can do a lot of things to get better, and our kids know that. Um, you know, we, we fumbled the ball a couple times tonight. Going in on the 10-yard line, fumble the ball, let them pick it up and score. You know, we got to cut down on those things to play good teams. And uh, like I said, our kids are aware of that. And we'll show up Monday, and we're going to get better. Well, Coach, congratulations on another win, and I, I hope you do get better. <laughs> <laughs> I do, too. Thank you. That is a typical coach answer. We got to get better. Even though we've blown everyone out of the water, even though we're undefeated, we still have to get better, Jeff. But you know, 
That's why I'm not a coach because I'm sitting here and I'm like, what more could you do as a team? But hey, I'm going to continue to stand in front of the television and I'm going to continue to let Coach Walker be the coach. <laughs> You know, Emily, I'm, I'm with you. I think the Panthers played really, really well tonight. 40 to 7, the final score. I think what he didn't like was that 7 number. You know, here's a crazy stat that Liberty Hill actually shares with Westlake. Entering tonight, both of those teams had pitched three straight shutouts, meaning their defense hadn't allowed a point on the board in nearly a month. Westlake, in fact, opened the season 4-0, and and they had only given up 7 points all year long. But tonight, they would face a team that averaged nearly 40 points per season in Hayes. Let's go ahead and roll the highlights and show you how the Shafts did tonight against Hayes. And speaking of points, well, Westlake quarterback Cade Klubick knows how to score him on the ground and through the air. This 23-yard run didn't quite make it into the end zone, but there's another guy on the team who has a knack for red zone touchdowns. His name, Gray Knack for. You can't make that up. The kid was made to score touchdowns, just like Klubnik was made to play quarterback. He called his own number on the next possession. The Shafts were up 14 zip. Then they stayed perfect on the season. Final score. 59 to 6. So that streak of shutout wins also broken for the Chaparrales. Emily, I know you've been keeping an eye on all the local scores. Tell us what's going on around town. Jeff, you know I got you. It's 26 6 day. We got San Marcos. 28. Awesome. Emily, let me go ahead and take over for you. I think you were saying in 26-6A, we had Sam Marcus taking on Austin High. Austin High, of course, led by that star quarterback and future Longhorn, Charles Wright. Austin High wins this one 56-28 over the Rattlers. And Johnson taking on Lehman. Johnson takes this one 44-20 is the final. Some more 5A scores coming your way. Glenn, the Grizzlies, oh, they fall to Elgin 41-22. That game played out east in Elgin. Floresville taking on Lockhart. Lockhart, the host in this one, but the hosts aren't going home happy. Floresville wins this one 33 to 28. Let's get back to the highlights and back to 26-6A, where Bowie took on Aikens and Bulldogs wide receiver Adrian Rodriguez opened the second half. Well, the best way you can, a 50-yard catch and run set up an eight-yard touchdown to who? Himself, our old friend Adrian. Bowie was up 28 zip then. They just kept on scoring. The Bulldogs get the shutout win 42 zip. Now to a team that is surprising everyone this season, Rouse. The Raiders entered tonight 4-1 after going 1-9 a year ago. They made the trip to Bastrop to play Cedar Creek, and as you guys know, one of my favorite plays is the scoop and score. That's what Rashad Mackey pulled off here, but if you like big offensive plays, well, Cedar Creek provided a few of those tonight. Brock McLaughlin brought time in the pocket, scrambled out to the right side of the pocket, then lobbed one up for Damian Perez, who brought the ball down, broke a tackle, then went for six. A whole lot of scoring in this one. Rouse wins 55 to 31. Emily, your mic was giving us trouble last time. Is it working again? Jeff, can you hear me? Can you hear me, Jeff? I'm going to assume you can. Okay, we've got LBJ winning this one, 18-10 over Burnett. And then Fredericksburg, 55 over Taylor, 13. Also, the scores, we're going to keep them rolling. Since my mic seems to be working, Giddings, final <laughs> score, 31-7. to And then Smithville, this was a close one, 29-26. to Good job for them, Jeff. Very good job, and hey, congrats to Giddings on winning that battle of Highway 77. We know that is a big one for the guys out east. We have updated you on 12 local games so far, and we have much more left to show you. Scores, highlights, our band of the week, and of course our big save play of the week nominees are all coming up a little later in the show.
Fever. I'm Jeff Jones and I'm joined now by my good friend Jay Garcia. Jake, I'm going to ask you a question that I think I know the answer to. If I was to ask you who are the most exciting players to watch in town, I know one name on your list would definitely be Lampass's quarterback, Ace Whitehead, right? Yeah, absolutely. Not, and not only the most exciting player to watch on the field, but one of the most exciting players to watch on social media too. Jeff, I'm convinced this guy scours social media looking for doubters and disbelievers and then writes those names on his mirror. And every morning when he gets out of bed, he looks at that mirror to give him motivation. He is stone cold. He runs an offense that's white hot. It's a very detailed description of Ace's <laughs> day you have there. Well, you say he's red hot, his offense is white hot. Well, that flame was extinguished a little bit today. Let's go ahead and roll the highlights. Things were tough for Ace and the guys early on. They had some trouble against Canyon Lake. First, the quarterback sack here, followed by a James Bate 54-yard run down the left sideline. The Hawks will punch that in just a few plays later. It took a while, but Lampass has got that ground game going eventually in the second half. Lampass is barely squeaks by Canyon Lake. They stay perfect on the season, pulling off the 40 to 34 win. We'll head back up to class six where we got Vandergrift and Cedar Ridge. Your weekly reminder that Vandy hasn't lost a district game since 2017 and no signs of that changing tonight. QB Ryan back has a fitting name because he's put the team on his back these past Ooh. few games. Gets the Vipers into the red zone here in a play later. He gets a well-deserved break. Motions out to let Ryan Shepard finish the job. Vandergriff has won four straight since losing the opener. Vipers over Cedar Ridge, 35 to six. Let's get some scores for you. Scoreboard right here. We have one on the screen. Gerald, they couldn't quite get this one. Come up one touchdown, shorter force in overtime against Gatesville. Gatesville wins this one, 35 to 28. To 3A, we have a few small schools in action. The one we want to show you right now looks like a yo. Oh. Surprise there, Yo does not beat McGregor. They fall 24 to 16 in that one. Now, guys, a moment ago, we told you about Vandergriff, who is really dominating 25-6A. But Jake, there is one team in that district that's trying to fight and claw its way from the middle of the pack up to where the Vipers are, and I'm talking about Round Rock. Yeah, they're a team last week. They forced five interceptions against Hutto. This week, taking on a McNeil team, they haven't lost to since 2009. You know, Jeff, in 2009, my hair was bigger than I was. I was under five feet, less than 100 pounds. That's oh. a true story. Undersized <laughs> and under-recruited because of it. Highly unfortunate. But you know who <laughs> doesn't have to deal with those Garcia jeans? It's Israel Morgan. Dude is a bowling ball, and the Round Rock game plan was just to feed him the rock any chance they could. Opening drive touchdown run for Morgan, and the Dragons go up seven. McNeil would hang around for a bit here, forcing a fumble, but it ended up just being a footnote. Round Rock cruises 55-9. The final score. Up in Georgetown, Eastview hosted Bastrop. Tied at seven. The Patriots turned to Michael Sedwick. Said what? Sedwick. Said six. Ooh. That touchdown was real. This punt, on the other hand, was like veneers, colored contacts, hair extensions. It was fake. Isaiah Quentin Jackson picked up the first down on the fake punt. The drive stalled, so Eastview took a 14 to 7 lead into the break. They go on to win that one by seven. Final score 28 to 21. Well, Jake, as you know, there are many things I love about Friday nights. I love to play on the field. I love the strategy that happens on the sidelines and in the press box. And, of course, at halftime, I love watching and listening to the bands. Here on Friday Football Fever, Jake, Emily, and I put our heads together, and we try to find a band that we can recognize every single week. This week, shout out to the band at San Marcos. The Rattlers always play loud and proud, and we're going to honor them right now as our band of the week. Take a listen.
about my good friend Jake Garcia. And Jake, you know this about me, but if my favorite team is not in action, I'll just default to rooting for either the local team or the underdogs. And there was one squad that took the field tonight, actually a while away from here, yeah. that had a chance to play both roles. Yeah, and that was Connolly so close to getting their first win of the season last week. They didn't get it. And so this week, really needing to strap on those PF Flyers at the PF Field <laughs> because their opponent, Brenham, is running away with the district. The PF Field, I like that. Let's go ahead and roll the highlights and see what happened at the PF field. Running away with the district is what they're doing and running away with the game is what they did. But the local guys did a little something early. Trevion Williams shot through the line of scrimmage from his middle linebacker spot. He recovered a fumble, but that drive wouldn't lead to much, at least not much good. Brenham took a punt back about 65 yards for a touchdown. Connolly is still in search of win number one this season, and it didn't come tonight. Brenham got the win 41-0. We got Wimberley going non-district tonight against Kennedale, but hardly a chance to rest and recover for the Texans. The Wildcats also a wagon. It's Wimberley with a strong start, though. Ty Pruitt with a beautiful over-the-shoulder catch. And Jeff, uh, looks like he's also been practicing his gritty dance moves, too. Me, too. Texans go on top early. I want to see that after the show, by the way. Uh, the defense, <laughs> solid game as well for Wimberley. Force a turnover here to get the ball right back. But the offense couldn't do much with it the rest of the way. Kennedale hands Wimberley its second straight loss, 17 to 14, the final score. Back to the scoreboard we go in 2A action. It's Thrall putting Moody in a bad mood, handing them their seventh straight loss. Thrall wins big, 41 to zero. And a Taps action. Hyde Park got its first win of the season last week. St. Joseph spoils the good vibes this week. They win 36-21, and we save the champs for last. Oh. Regents blows out John Paul, 55 to seven, and with it. They're district champs for the fifth year in a row. All right, the champs are district champs. They are undefeated. They're definitely not in a bad mood. You said Moody might be in a bad mood. If you're in a bad mood, well, I want to cheer you up by sending one of these Friday Football Fever t-shirts your way. Jake, what do you think of that? It's beautiful. It's ironed this time. There's no wrinkles in this one. Uh, popped it in the dryer, didn't quite iron it. Either way though, I want you to win one of these and the way you can do that is by checking me out on social media at Jeff Jones Sports on Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook. I'm gonna post a picture soon, actually that I'll ask my friend Emily John Greco to take right now. Boom, I'll post that picture and at random, I'm gonna pick somebody who follows me on that platform and comments on that picture. I'm gonna FedEx you one of these t-shirts a little later this week. Guys, stay right there. We have our power player of the week coming up and much more right here on Friday Football Fever.
Welcome back to Friday Football Fever. I'm Jeff Jones, he's Jake Garcia. And Jake, as you know, each and every week this season, we're gonna have the privilege of honoring one person as our PEC Power Player of the Week. Yeah, it's our chance to celebrate someone who gets good grades, uh, gives back to the community, and contributes to the overall fun on Friday nights. We found a person who checks all of those boxes and more this week. We'd like to wish congratulations to Vandergriff drum major June Lee. The word that June's band director used multiple times to describe him, is leader. In addition to his work with the band, June is a member of three different honor societies and he's the vice president of two of them. He's a great student who is involved in an organization called Austin Health Through Science. That's a group of teenagers who make sure the community is safe and they teach science and health to elementary school kids. Now due to COVID-19, that group isn't spending as much face-to-face -face time with the kids who they mentor, but they're still finding creative ways to give back to the community. So what we did was we went out and reached out to Austin-based companies and we donated masks to the district. And I feel like stuff like that, what we do really makes sure the community can bond together, especially in this time where we don't get to um, act as a community because we're all quarantined. And just that, it's like the accountability aspect that we have for each other. Like we're always going to be there for everyone. and. The idea of the whole sense of having a community, it really is reinforced by being part of that group. So if you know anyone who earns good grades, gives back to the community, and again contributes to the fun on Friday nights, let us know about Kim or her and send us an email at sports at kview.com. Someone you know could be our next PEC Power Player of the Week. We'll be right back with our Play of the Week nominees. Welcome back to Friday Football Fever. Each and every week, we see hundreds of great plays on high school football fields, and it's our job to watch them all and narrow them down to three of our favorites to re-show you as our Big Save of the Week nominees, of course, presented by Austin Tailco. Let's go ahead and show you our three nominees this week, starting with nominee number one. And nominee number one comes from right here in Marble Falls High School, the site of our game of the week, but it comes from a Liberty Hill player. My, oh my, forget Barton Homer Blake is now officially my favorite Simpson. The Liberty Hill running back had five touchdowns through the first three quarters, including this 55 yarder. Blake was a man on a mission tonight, and if that mission was to score 40 points and keep that undefeated season intact, mission accomplished. All right, play number two. Apparently, Easty watched Thursday night football last night because here they dial up the fake punt oh. and calling the number of Isaiah Quinton Jackson. IQJ is the locals call him. <laughs> Easty picks up the first down, picks up the win as well. IQJ, nice. Last up, we have a play that's from a school that is just on the edge of our viewing area, Canyon Lake. You guys know I'm a sucker for a brave cameraman and our Scott guest stood strong as Canyon Lake's Jesse Horner came right towards him in the corner of the end zone. Jesse and the guys gave Lampasas and our photographers about all they could handle and produced a few good plays along the way. 
Guys, now that we've shown you our three Play of the Week nominees, it's up to you to vote on them. You do that by visiting my Twitter page, at Jeff Jones Sports, checking out the poll that I recently posted, and just voting on the play that you like the best and you think deserves to win. Jake and I will make sure that we re-air that play on, well, I was going to say on Tuesday, but that's election day, so we're going to re-air that play later this week in the 6 o'clock show and let you guys know who won. Jake, we've got a Texas versus OK State, the sixth ranked team in the nation coming up tomorrow. How are you feeling about the Longhorns going into that matchup? Not great, but, but then again, you know, it's been a terrible week for Texas, especially on the recruiting front, but the year is 2020, so would I be shocked if they won? Not at all, uh, but rationally thinking, I'm going to say I don't feel good for them. I agree with what a lot of you, with <laughs> a lot of what you just said. Rationally thinking, OK State should win this one, but something in my gut just tells me tomorrow is going to be a good day for the Longhorns. For Emily, Jake, JP, our photographer, as well as the other people around town shooting highlights for us, I'm Jeff Jones. Thanks for watching.